Okay, welcome into the channel everybody. It's great to have y'all here now. We're coming to you from the, I guess you could call it the front porch of my shop. Um, hopefully soon this will be an office editing studio slash bathroom. Now in this video, we're gonna be building this bench. This is the Burnham Set T. Now this is a bench that I sell directly off my website. It's one of my favorite designs. I love the lines and style. This, this is uh, kind of based or inspired by an old historic Texas day bed. This particular bench is made for a dining room table that we recently built at a Live Oak. That's about three videos back. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend you go check that out. It's a really cool table. And this bench is about to go with it. Now, a few things we did here is we shortened the bench down a little bit so that it could slide under the table. Generally, this bench is about up about this tall. The back's a little bit taller as well, but we wanted it to go under the table, so we just kind of shortened it down. Also, it has a wooden seat, which normally these set tees will have an upholstered seat in them. This is the first one I've ever done with a wood seat. Now, also a few key things. Um, just like the dining room table, we ended up doing a lot of veneer work in this. We used live oak for the material. Uh, these are the same slabs that we used on the dining room table to match on this backrest and on the aprons. So basically, you've got a veneer that's a book match right here. Same on the back, uh, an oak core here, and uh, all around the aprons, the same thing. Everything else is solid live oak with the exception to this bench seat, which is a white oak that we fumed to match the color. So let's just jump right into this video. What I wanna focus on is basically this kind of in frame here. It's a really cool aspect of this bench. Um, you've got a really neat top rail that's shaped and has this scoop cove underneath. So we're gonna start right there on that piece, cutting that joinery, showing how that works and showing you how we shape this to get a nice, beautiful radius. To do all four, or do you only have two? Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. For that. And you get just enough there. So now what we'll do, we can do is trace it, router table or table saw, and right. take a lot of that waste out. Oh, okay. All right, I'm gonna do the real one. Go for it. I'm gonna you do got it. it. You got it. So I'll just trace around and then I can start taking off exactly some of that material. I think, I'm trying to remember my process, but I think you take the code on the router table first. While you still have, while you still have these parts. Square edges. That makes sense. No, I take that back. What I did is I cut this angle here straight on the table saw and then I lay it this flat on the router table in this corner against the fence. And then I take a really light like cut board. with a box core bit yeah. and raise it up, take another light cut and raise it up. And you know, obviously you've traced that so you sure. know where you're going to. Okay. okay, so you saw there how we cut the tenon in this top rail. Now we leave it square, obviously, as you saw in the video. And then we've already got this profile cut, so we dry fit it and then we trace on the profile of this leg onto this part, and then we just basically rough cut out the shape. We'll leave it a little bit bigger and glue it up big, and then we can come back and shape it all uh, nice and flush together. So we start by doing a cut here at a 45 on this part on the table saw to kind of hog off the waist. Then we'll go to a router table with a box core bit and take um, a lot of this shape out. Most of this material, there's about a 16th to a 32nd of material left there. And then uh, the top part, we just kind of hand shape it uh, rough with hand planes, leaving it the same, just a little bit big. And then what we'll do is glue it up from there.
So another real interesting and cool detail of this bench is this joint here where this apron connects to the leg, right? You've got a curve here where this leg is, so you don't have a flat surface for your shoulder to sit on. So what you have to do is do what's called a house mortise and tenon, so that shoulder buries into this leg um, about this far, and that, that pocket is square and true, uh, and it gives a place for that shoulder to, to seat up against. Um, and that allows you to put a um, shoulder up to a curved part. So I wanna share how I did that real quick. We've got a jig that I made to do um, the mortise, and then we have to hand shape this, not hand shape it, but plane it down to fit into that pocket. I think the only real problem it's presented so far is the, the issue on the bandsaw, which I think is partially the blade, partially the wood, with it cutting slightly thinner than we wanted. Yeah, it didn't have it either on the table. The table seemed to cut pretty good. Yeah, and then a, a little bit of tear out issues here and there, but overall, it hasn't been like this. Clamps will make sure it shoulders up and it's in the right position, but that's right. basically it. Sweet looking. So you gotta do that three times. Okay. Yeah. Hold it like this, you're just gonna bust it. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the rounded edges, it probably won't feel good. Yeah. The one thing you gotta be really careful about is not hitting that, which I've done. Or is that about 200 over here? 
So not not coming too far out and catching this corner is that or just well, this you, in general? Well, it's okay to hit in here a little bit, yeah. but if you hit, see, I already cut a little bit there. It feels like. And it's it real easy the... to rock the plane. Yeah, I mean, from the side, you're going to see this little scoop scoop right there. Okay. And it's really hard to fix. It's just like any plane, you know, the pressure has got to be yeah. down in the back. And you don't have to necessarily make full passes if you want to do a few here and then go. Yeah. do with the flat scraper is come in this way but you have to go like this right you can't pull it out yeah when you shape things it's like makes a huge difference when you get really crisp transitions right and so that's always what like especially up here yeah and there's already some Heart's broken out, so we're gonna have to shake it back a little. What you doing there, bud? That can't feel comfortable, man. Your shoes on the wrong feet. Is it alright? Normally, when I would do this, I would use. That's a car I would use the. Uh, I'd actually grab the scrub one. Yeah, it wouldn't work. What makes it, you know, it's fairly easy is you've got a point of reference, right? So yeah. you just want to take the only passes. It's easy when you come off of it to dive down again. Okay, the last thing I want to kind of detail on this bench and show you guys is the connection of this back um, rest to the, to the leg. Now in the past we've just taken this back rest and just set it on this um, back post. It matches the profile and just glued it um, a few inches down and then screwed it on. So what we did different on this one, what we're gonna do moving forward is we actually got a pocket here, a little rabbit that gives you a shoulder for this to set in on. I think it makes the bench a little bit stronger. It also makes it look a little bit better when you look back here, you don't see this big seven eighths inch thick piece hanging off the back. You only see about three eighths um, and it looks a little cleaner, a little nicer and uh, I think it's a cool detail. So we made a jig on the CNC to kind of match this profile and used a router and Robert cut out this pocket and uh, made it fit on there pretty dang good. just glue it on maybe three inches from the top down and we'll, I'll get screws in it because I don't think I think those screws might be too long for it. Can you push on this <laughs> while I clamp it? Stand 
stand up. Yeah. Pretty dang good. There's just slight gap there, but I don't yeah. think. Too worried about. I don't know what what's causing that. Maybe that is when it pushes it out. Maybe it's just so it's, like, it's just causing this gap. It's not too bad. You know, and it kind of redeems the what we had to cut off. You know how like the yeah. profile of the backrest matched. Yeah. This kind of brings that back. Yeah. All right, so you can kind of see how nice this looks. This kind of um, shaped shoulder it matches the profile of this leg. It looks really clean. We had a slight little gap in there, but for the most part, it fit really good. So the next thing we did is turn our attention to the bench seat. So we ended up putting a wooden seat on this one. Generally, these will have a cushion. This is regular white oak. Um, and we carved this out on the CNC, so it has a slight shape to it just to give it a little bit more comfort, a little bit better look. Um, just a flat plank of wood kind of loses its, it just kind of looks silly. Um, if you look at it from this profile, you can kind of see that kind of shape coming up right there. So the CNC took care of all that, quite a bit of sanding to get it all cleaned up. And then for the finish, what we ended up doing was actually fuming this with ammonia. So this is a process where you kind of capture the wood in an enclosed space and you use a high strength ammonia and it reacts with the tannins in the oak and it turns it this nice brown color. And you can kind of adjust how dark it goes by how long you expose it. Um, this is something I haven't done in a while, but it did a good job of matching this uh, white oak to the live oak. I think the colors look good. I got a lot of kind of heat in the last video for putting the regular white oak on the table extensions on the end of that table as opposed to staining them and matching the color. So on this one, we're kind of, we're gonna blend it a little bit and it looks good. You can see here the difference between sap and heart and the color you get. And you know, when this wasn't fumed, this was almost all one color. You couldn't see much of a dif difference. So there's more tannins in the actual heartwood. You get more reaction on that, you get darker color. I think it looks pretty good. Golly, that one piece of wood looks so cool. That back one? Yeah. Wish they had that <coughs> on there. I mean, I guess the comparison is that to this. Right, yeah, yeah. Kind of a nice color to it, but it's... You can go darker if you wanted to, too. You just leave it? You just leave it overnight. Okay, so that's gonna shut it down for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, one quick thing. I know this wasn't an in-depth build of this bench. Um, I have actually several other videos where I've done that. So I've built this bench a couple times and sh filmed several videos on it. I'm gonna link those in the description. So if you wanna see a real detailed build of it, you can go check those out. This, um, I just more wanted to showcase it. I wanted to kind of feature, you know, the cool shaping of the arm, how we do that, how we handle this joint here. Um, where you got this curved um, leg into a straight piece and obviously just showcase the beauty of the live oak and um, Just how unique and cool this piece is. I think it's worthy of a video one thing to consider too as well This generally these are will go against a wall So anytime someone's ordered these are usually putting it against a wall in a home This one is um, actually gonna go on the, on the table, right? So you're gonna see it from the back. So we've tried to focus on making th this face or this side the best looking. You know, we used our good veneers on this uh, back rail, uh, really cool looking piece of wood here. We got some sap wood with some really dark color in it. We also put the brass screws in right here, clocked them so they're vertical. 
and this whole slot is so you got room for wood movement and again you saw us make this little pocket so this is thinner um, it looks a lot better than having this whole thick piece hanging off against there so that's one thing to think about is this is um you know this is where you see it right this is what you're gonna see so i'm, I'm just incredibly happy with how this turned out it looks great you guys definitely need to leave a comment and give robert a little bit of a pat on the back because he did an amazing job on this. He did a lot of the work. He's really taking on more responsibilities on the bench, building. He's way more involved now in the building of some of these pieces, which are complicated pieces, not easy to build, and he's doing a great job. You know, he shaped one of these arms. He did most of the fitting on the joints. Um, so pretty, pretty proud of him. He did great work on this, and I think um, you guys should leave a comment and let him know that he did a good job. Also, I just wanna share, 2023 is really getting booked out, and we have some very exciting builds um, this is my sketchy organization system, but this one I'm really excited. This is a king bed I designed for a client in Austin. It's going to be a very cool bed. I can't wait to share that dovetail nightstands, all kinds of cool stuff, live edges. This, I'm also really pumped about the sofa. So I designed a sofa. I've always wanted to build kind of like a wooden sofa, and this is going to New Mexico, and I had the opportunity to design that. I can't wait to build that. We're going to be starting that one pretty dang soon. So um, there's also some awesome, you know, we've got our Seguin table we sell off the website, uh, another Nakashima table. This one's going to be a live edge and walnut, I think. So a lot of cool stuff to share. I uh, hope you guys uh, will look forward to that and hope you enjoy these videos. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Be sure to tell Robert. Great job. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in and we'll see you next time.